Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to be working on the dialog object, which is just going to be a simple scriptable object that stores the data we need for each piece of dialog. So instead of hard coding strings the way we've been doing it so far, we're going to be creating a bunch of different instances of the scriptable object that we can then feed the code and it'll then read from the object what dialog to show. So let's go ahead and create a new C sharp script and we'll call this dialog object. Let's open this up in our text editor. Let's get rid of all the default unity methods here. Let's zoom in a bit. And since this is going to be a scriptable object, we are going to inherit from scriptable object. Now in the top, we need to create an asset menu. And the way we do that is we just type in square brackets, create asset menu, and then normal brackets, menu name equals and then what you want here is your path. And for this, I'm just going to type in dialog slash dialog object. And you'll see how this shows up in Unity in just a second. So let's go back into the editor. Let's create a new folder and we'll call this dialog data. And then once I right click and then go create, you'll see there's this new option here called dialog and I can create a dialog object. It's going to be pretty empty for now. We'll just call this test and we want to actually give it a few fields here for us to customize. So let's go back into our text editor here and we're going to create a serialized text area and we're going to make this of type string array and we'll call this dialog. Let's save that. And if we then come back into Unity, you'll see there's this little, um, this little uh, thing here we can open and you'll see it says list is empty and what we can do then is we can say okay well if we want to show two items to the player then we basically just create uh, an array of size two and we can write our dialog here and for example I'm just going to write in this is my dialog exclamation mark and something like I don't know hello and then in here we'll do this is our second dialogue good bye and we'll save that so in order for the dialogue ui to access this without being able to write to it we are going to be creating a property namely a getter and this is just going to be a public string array and give the same name with an uppercase d and since it's a uh, getter we'll just want it to return the private dialogue string array and this basically just prevents code from the outside from writing to it and it can only read from it which is exactly what we want we don't want anything to overwrite the dialogue we've set up inside of unity here let's just get rid of these namespaces here and let's implement it so in order to actually use this new dialogue object we're going to need to make a few changes to the code that we wrote in the last episode so if we just come into our text editor here and we open up the typewriter effect, instead of this run method returning nothing, we want it to return the coroutine that it starts. So let's just replace this void here with a type coroutine and we'll just return the result of the call to start coroutine, just like that. Now if we come into our dialog UI and we just get rid of all this, we want to store this inside of a private member variable, which we will get at runtime by just calling typewriter effect is equal to get component typewriter effect. Then we're going to make a public void run, sorry, not run, show dialog, and we'll have this take in the dialog object, whose dialog that we want to show. And this is going to start a coroutine because we want to wait in between each of the entries inside of the array that we've made. So we're going to need to make a, another coroutine. And in order to do that, we just may want to make sure we import the system.collections namespace. And we'll do I enumerator. And we'll call this step through dialog, which also takes in dialog object. Then we want to just make a for each loop. And we're going to do for each string dialog in dialog object dot dialog 
and in here we just want to type in yield return typewriter effect dot run and we want to give it the dialogue as well as the text label then in the show dialogue method right here we're just going to call start coroutine step through dialogue give it the dialogue object just like that and then in the start method we need to actually call this method with some kind of dialogue object so let's make a new field this will just be a temporary field and we'll call this private dialogue object test dialogue and in the start method we'll call show dialogue with the dialogue object sorry test dialogue there we go so what's just going on here is we get the typewriter effect and then we just call the show dialogue method and we'll just pass in this test object that we just made and this then just starts a coroutine that steps through each of the entries in the dialogue object and calls the typewriter effects run method now if you recall we made this little wait here in the last episode just to see that it worked and we're just going to get rid of that now and we'll pop into unity and we'll go to our canvas here and we'll just give it the test dialog object and hit play see if it works and as you can see it just very quickly goes through each of them but it does actually show both of them so just to show you same way as we did in the last episode to show you that it actually does work we're just going to type in a little wait here we'll wait for two seconds and let's pop back into unity and hit play and it shows the first one and then the second one now we want to wait for some kind of input in between each of these dialogues so luckily that's pretty easy to do all we have to do is if we come into our text editor here we can do yield return new wait until true or sorry wait until and we just want to give it a function predicate where we call input dot get key down and we I'm just going to use the uh, the space bar for now so key code dot space so all that's happening here is that it's running the typewriter effect and once that's done it then waits for you to press the space bar and then it wraps back around as long as there's some kind of dialogue to show so let's just get rid of this little wait here and we'll come back into unity and we'll just restart this real quick and you see it stops as soon as it's written the first piece of dialogue and then it shows the next part as soon as we click space okay so now we're just going to make a method that closes the dialogue box and resets the text as soon as it's done and we'll also use this same method to close the dialogue and reset the text as soon as the game starts so we're going to make a private void close dialogue box and we need a reference to the dialogue box so we're going to go serialize field private game object dialogue box that's just like that and then inside of the close method we just want to do dialogue box set active false and we want to do text label dot text is equal to the empty string with a lowercase s just like that and then at the end of the for loop here we just want to copy in the close dialogue box call and we also want to do it in the start method just like that if we come back into unity now and go to a canvas you'll see the dialogue box game object field and we'll just drag this in right here and then if we come into our editor we also just need a method to show the dialogue box or oh, sorry we don't actually need a method for that we can just do it right here by just calling dialogue box set active true okay so if we go back into unity and hit play you see it starts typing it shows its dialogue and then it closes so that's going to be it for this episode thank you so much for watching leave a like if you enjoyed and i'll see you soon bye for now